If you would, I'd like for you to open your Bibles to the Old Testament book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3, and we want to notice verses 17 and 18. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verses 17 and, and 18. I know that the world right now seems a little crazy. There are a lot of things that we are dealing with that just a few years ago you wouldn't have thought would have been a possibility. Who could have predicted something like COVID and the way that it has changed the world and the impact it's had on, on so many different aspects of our life? And, and we're still dealing with it to some extent. And then there is the economy that seems to just be going in the wrong direction and doesn't know where it's going to stop. When is it going to get better? Who could imagine paying $4 for a gallon of gas just a few years ago? And then there's this war where Russia has invaded Ukraine and you've got people who have been displaced and we see the pictures and, and you wonder what's going to be the outcome? And when is this going to end? Who's going to end up getting involved in this? How long is it going to take? And, and all the uncertainty that, that is there. And that's on top of everything that we have to deal with as individuals. And so they are very troubling times. What's a person to do when we face troubled times? Well, I certainly don't have all the answers, but I'm thankful that God has given us his word. And the answer, I believe, is there. You know, we're not the first people to ever deal with difficult or troubling times. I was reading yesterday in the book of Habakkuk, and I couldn't couldn't help but think about how the things that he was facing are very similar to the things that we face today. See, Habakkuk lived in a time when his people had become pretty evil. They turned away from God. And so this prophet asked God, how long are you going to let this happen? And God says, I see what's going on. And I'm not going to let it continue. I'm going to send the Chaldeans to punish my people, Judah. And when Habakkuk hears that, he says, well, God, they're worse than we are. How can you use someone worse than us to punish us? And then Habakkuk says, I'm going to step back and wait for an answer. God gives the answer in chapter 2. And he explains that he's going to use the Chaldeans and then the Chaldeans will get theirs. You don't need to worry about that, Habakkuk. I'm in charge. In fact, at the close of chapter 2, God reminds him, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. I think sometimes when we sing that song, we think, oh, that means everybody get quiet. Worship is going to start. No, that verse is telling us God is in control, and he will do what is right. And we can trust in that. So in chapter 3, Habakkuk gives a prayer. And at the end of the prayer, after considering all the troubles that are going on, you get to verse 17, and here's what the prophet says. And I think this is a key for us. What are we to do? when there are troubles and there are difficult days. Look at what he writes. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herds in the stalls. If all of these things are gone, if we have all this trouble and all this difficulty, what am I going to do? Verse 18, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. No matter what kind of times we're going through, Habakkuk says, I am going to continue to serve the Lord. In fact, there's a, a very powerful verse that's used often in the New Testament here in the book of Habakkuk. It's chapter 2 and, and verse 4, and that's where we're reminded 
but the just shall live by his faith. When we're going through difficult times, troubling times, what are we to do? First and foremost, we are to continue to trust in our God and to serve Him no matter what circumstances we find ourselves in. You want to bring peace to life, our lives as individuals? You keep that priority. And it'll go a long way in keeping things in focus. I don't know what the outcome of all those things we mentioned at the beginning is going to be. I, I don't know when the economy is going to turn. I, I don't know what's going to happen with Russia and Ukraine or if other nations are going to get in. I, I don't have those answers. But I do know who we can continue to trust in, no matter what we have to go through. And isn't it wonderful, as Christians, that we have the privilege of calling God our Father. We're His children, and we can know that He will continue to watch over us. Tonight, if you're here and you're not yet one of His children, we want to encourage you to come to Him in obedience. Be baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins. Become a member of the family of God and then continue to trust in Him no matter what is going on in this world. So tonight, if you're here and you need to obey the gospel, if you need to come back to your first love, this invitation song's for you. Won't you come as together we stand and sing?